Okay, Sukiya so actually opened a pork katsu version and this one is here, right? So this is a very really Good evening guys! Okay, it's like 11pm at night and I am at Terminal 2 because we are flying, 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 flying. Okay, it's Valentine's Day today, yeah. So happy Valentine's Day, everybody. And today we are flying to Kyoto. So we are going for a Kyoto Marathon. Yes, another overseas marathon. And we are kind of bringing the heat over again because this Sunday is like gonna be like warmer than usual. So hopefully it will still be cooling. So in the meantime, our flight is at 1.30 a.m. Oh, there's a very huge bacha coffee over at Terminal 2 as well. So the last time we flew from Terminal 2, right, this is a relatively newly opened terminal because they renovated, right? So um, it was in the morning and the shops were not open. So now it's like open. Wow, the bacha coffee, very nice. Eh? Looks even bigger than the one at Terminal 3. <laughs> okay, so I'll see you guys later when we bought the plane and I'll show you guys the breakfast that we have tomorrow as well. I'm just gonna catch some sleep because it's like red eye flight, so I need sleep. So I'll catch you guys later. One hour later. We have arrived at Kansai Airport and now we are on the Hello Kitty JR Haruka train and we are going straight to Kyoto. I want, I want water. Okay, right to Steve. So I managed to freshen up a bit at the airport, change to my contacts and put makeup. So, okay, the flight was pretty uneventful uh, with just a bit of slight turbulence, but oh, the flight is five and a half hours too short, like not enough sleep. I think I only slept like three hours plus, then they were serving breakfast. So, anyway, it's gonna be like a 1.5 hour ride. Not really, okay, 75 minute ride to Kyoto. So, just enjoy our train ride on the Hello Kitty train. We are back in Kyoto after one year and Kyoto looks pretty much the same, probably more crowded this year because more people are traveling to Japan and warmer too. But before I proceed any further to show you guys our itinerary for today, let me show you guys the hotel that we're staying at which is the Makio Kyoto Station where we stayed last year. And basically this hotel is like a 10 minute walk from Kyoto station, so a very convenient one. So in the meantime, check out my room tour and some clips of the hotel as well. So I'm back in my hotel in Kyoto, which is the same hotel that I stayed last year. So I just want to give you a refreshed update on the room, especially because this year is a different room. So because I'm actually now a Go Echo member, right? So. I got like even more privileges. There's still the usual welcome drink and guess what? They actually gave me like afternoon drinks like for two of us every day of our stay. So every day you can go get free coffee or free juice. So this um, entitles me to a free upgrade as well because I'm a gold member. So let me just show you the privilege room. I booked superior room and you know what's the rate that I paid for Eco members? $410 for four nights. And I even get the free upgrade from superior to privilege room and there's also early check-in and they even asked what I wanted late check-out but we are going off so it's okay. <laughs> anyway, this is like the room, a very quick room tour which is actually slightly similar to the superior room but I think with a bit of upgraded finishes. Lah. So this is like the open um, closet with some hangers and let's check out the toilet. Toilet is a um, decent size so like all um, Mercure hotels is pretty similar. There's an automated toilet bowl like in Japan then here is your countertop, 
with a small little bean. Yeah, okay, this small bean is a bit too small. I remember last year, I, I think I would prefer a bigger bean. But anyway, this is the shower area. And they have a very nice rain shower and also provide you with all your shower shampoo, um, your shower foam in nice reusable containers. Then we head on to the room here. So that's like this area where you have a coffee machine and also your flask. And oh yeah, let's see what's in this one. <gasps> Oops, the cups and there's some tea and your Nespresso capsules. And ta-da, the fridge. Yeah, <laughs> it's empty. Okay, so it's empty. So you can buy some sake or some drinks. And this is the room. So similar to the uh, superior room, right? It's a king size bed. It looks pretty similar to me. So um, yeah, this is a comfortable bed, which I stayed last year and it's very comfortable now. So pillows are firm enough. There's also a very big TV. I think it looks like a smart TV. Is it a smart TV? We'll find out. <laughs> and the only difference between the superior and the privileged room, right? I think this is like a different sofa set. So pretty nice. I'm going to open up the curtains and check out the view. Oops. Okay, let's... Eh, how do we pull up? Okay, there we go. What is our view? Ooh, see the mountains in the background? So nice. Okay, not much of a view except for the beautiful mountains there. So I'll show you guys the rest of the hotel, which I actually did show last year, but I can do an hour quicker. And we'll probably have the hotel breakfast one of the days as well because for Econ members, I get 50% off. So the normal price of the breakfast is like 28, 28,000, eh, 28, two, no, 2,800 yen, which is like 28 sing. But it's like going to be $14 for me. So let's try the buffet breakfast and show you guys how it is the spread. This is the lobby of the Mercure Kyoto station. Looks pretty similar to when we stayed last year. And yeah, still very nicely furnished and new. And breakfast will be at the single restaurant over here. Trattoria Kyoto. Trattoria M Kyoto. So this is where we'll have breakfast tomorrow or maybe the next day. See which day we have some free time to enjoy. So back to the current moment now. <laughs> okay, so we are unpacked and checked in early. So now we are going to head out to grab some lunch. Actually, Kyoto is not so cold this year. In fact, it was actually colder last year. This week, apparently, there's um, some heat, heat wave across Japan. So it's like warmer temperatures than usual. It's currently like 17 degrees now. And yeah, I'm just wearing this jacket because like we are going to be out the whole day, uh, the rest of the day. Lah. So worry that later in the evening will get warmer. Uh, colder sorry <laughs> yeah so that's why we are still wearing the jacket but it's like not so cooling it's pretty warm actually yeah, so now in the meantime i'm gonna try to grab some lunch before we head over to otsu city to check out the lake biwa area later found a very nice area near our hotel which has nakao this is actually one of the chains in japan which is pretty similar to Sukiya. So they sell a lot of like Donburi bowls and stuff. That's for him. Is it? No space. Oh no. It's packed. So lunch is served and I ordered the cheesy beef rice bowl. So it really reminds me of Sukiya. So this is like only in Japan. In Singapore they have Sukiya but not this is Nakao. So Nakao has also got chicken and also um, noodles like and also curry base. So this is like cheesy beef. I tried it the last round when I was in Osaka. It was pretty good. So now there's one nearby here we can kabolo. Mm. So Chibeng ordered mm. the pork cutlet rice and egg. Let me show you guys. Ta-da! Looks pretty good as well. And the price is very reasonable. He says it's like with a raw egg. So the price is very reasonable, like around 500 plus to 600 plus yen. Oh, you can crack the egg or use crack. So very worth it. Cheaper than Singapore's suki. Yeah. Ooh, raw egg. The pork cutlet looks pretty good as well. So Singapore, they also have a... Okay, suki actually opened a pork katsu version. And this one is here, yeah, very nice. 
so so. Mmm. Very tender pork. And goes very well with the egg. Very nice. In Japan, right, you need to definitely come to the family mart to buy their stuff. Like this is the bread that I ate so many times last year. The ham and cheese croissant, they still have it. Gonna get this for breakfast. And you know what? They got like super cute cat buns. It's like cat paw. It's like custard. So we're gonna like buy the bread. Woohoo! Yeah, I love family mud bread. Too bad they don't have family mud in Singapore. It's so cute. And they got a cake too. Super cute, right? Oh my god. Going crazy in the family mud. Loads of vending machines everywhere. So most of the restaurants are vending machine based. So the stretch that we are actually staying at has lots of cafes and restaurants nearby. But some of them actually look like they only open like in the evening. So we'll walk past again tonight to check it out. We have arrived in Otsukyo, which is um, Otsu City, and it's part of the Shiga Prefecture. So Shiga Prefecture used to be one of Japan's capitals. Yeah, so um, okay, it's a uh, very near Kyoto itself. So basically, it was just like a ten-minute train ride over from Kyoto, and this is home to lots of historical places like the Onjoji Midera Temple, which we are going to check out later, and also. Um, Lake Biwa, yeah, you know it actually used to be a Lake Biwa Marathon in, was it in February? Yeah, it used to be in February, so Osaka, Osaka Marathon used to be in October or November period. So they actually kind of merged the Lake Biwa Marathon and the Osaka Marathon. So anyway, that not, we're not here to run marathon, we're just here to check out uh, Lake Biwa and the area. There's actually a cruise that you can also take, but I don't know whether it will be taking like, like a one hour cruise. Anyway, it kind of started to rain a bit and see the road is a bit wet already. Rain, rain, go away, don't come back, especially not on Sunday. We are on the way to the Lake Biwa area, but this is like a... Okay, Google told us to walk through here, so it looks like a very old school, dilapidated area. And there's much of not many people around here. So <laughs> hopefully there'll be more people over at the uh, Lake Biwa area. Or maybe not many people actually come to this Osu city because this is not really one of the key sites when you come to Kyoto, right? So, but we are trying something new because we already did all the key places last year. So, let's hope we're on the right track. Gosh, it's raining here. Uh, it's like we bring the rain and the heat wherever we go. It's raining and we are using our jackets as like, yeah, instead of opening the umbrella. Okay, there's really bolang over here at this Lake Biwa area. <laughs> so hopefully, okay, after this we are going to go to the Onjoji Midera Temple. So yeah, these are some of the key sites to see over here in the Otsu city. Because of the rain, the whole place is like all fogged up today. I'm assuming that should be the cruise ship over there. It's a pretty huge cruise ship. But I wonder if there's really a lot of people taking. Like today is like so rainy and foggy, right? You can't really see much of the scenery or so. But it kind of reminds me of like Disneyland because just now the music that the cruise terminal was actually playing, right? It kind of sounded a bit like those Disneyland music. So gives you a very overall Disney feel. Oh, but really, really, it's like all totally fogged up today. <laughs> can't really see much of the scenery. Chance upon this shrine over here called Mio Ginger Shrine because we're still making our way to the Onjoji Midera place, but it's like making us walk one big round. So these are the usual Japanese stone lanterns that you find everywhere in Japan. Apparently it's supposed to rain until like 2am this uh, tonight. So feel I am back in Seoul when it was like pouring and raining for two whole days. <laughs> Please go away rain. <laughs> oh yeah at the Onjoji main gate. Like we found the place finally. <laughs> Mm. 
this is a UNESCO site and there's a very huge flight of stairs up there okay so we bought the entry ticket and it's um 600 yen for one adult so now we need to navigate the stairs to go up since we're here might as well right since like breathing the rain and all Not sure what it is about Japan and the temples, they are all built on like on top of a hill. So this um, Onjoji Midera temple is one of the four greatest temples in Japan and it's a Buddhist temple. So located also on top of a hill, but there's really nobody in. So unlike Kyoto's Kiyomizu Dera and like Fushimi in Aritaisha, but there's really no one around now except yeah, yeah, us. Or maybe because it's like raining now. <laughs> okay, let's just take a quick walk around. Usual ritual of um, washing your hands with the water at the temples. Actually, it's really cold, so I guess. Is the water cold? Yeah. Oh, it's very cold because it's raining, plus, yep, the rain is getting heavier again. We are at the Bishan Mondo Hall, which was built in 1616. So this is a very really Japanese style of architecture. Oh, you see the roof. This uh, area is actually pretty huge. So we are spending at least 3 km of walking around. So they have like different parts of the temple that is like very widespread out lah. So. There's a golden hall in one area, there's like this um, huge room in another area, there's a main hall in another area, so it makes you do a lot of walking. And this one has really nice Japanese stone lanterns as well. We are at the Kondo main hall, which was built in the 7th century. And overall, a really serene area over here. Just kind of curious why not many tourists are around here to check out this beautiful temple. Time to find some dinner after a long half day walking in the rain at Otsu City. So we're now back at Kyoto Station and we are at the Isetan building where there's lots of restaurants and we are on 11th floor which is like this eat paradise place so trying to see which Japanese restaurant we're gonna have so we had like dawn this afternoon right so maybe now can eat something different okay let's see uh, okay <laughs> uh, we don't know what to eat though actually we want to go eat some sushi but can't really find any good affordable sushi around in the year so maybe over the next few days or when we're in Osaka so in the meantime let's see what we shall have then later we're gonna go explore the food market area and also get some Japanese nonsense snacks to bring back to Singapore yeah I cannot resist all the Japanese snacks haha <laughs> decided to migrate down to the basement instead cause the restaurants at the 11th floor are more pricey so okay, we can go check out the cheaper food at the basement because there's so many options right we need to eat the Spartas food so let's see what we can find so in the meantime taking escalator down from 11th floor so many escalators to go I love all these Japanese snacks and desserts I really want to buy everything okay but too much and too simple so chocolates strawberries oh my god Japanese cakes Okay, I'm not a matcha fan. Yeah, I'm not a matcha fan, so... Okay, this one doesn't appeal to me! <laughs> but, oh my god, this is like such beautiful... Okay, I need to buy some Japanese snacks. <laughs> um, okay, this one, two. Two, then uh, uh, one of this. This one, one. Then uh, this one, starting 
our trip with some sushi and the yummy ginger. So we ordered a mixture of sushi and also some other sides. Looking forward, since there's queue of like local people, the sushi must be good. Check out the size of this squid okonomiyaki. It's huge, filled with eggs. Okay, let's dig in. Woo! My favorite salmon. So the good thing about Japan sushi, right? They put the wasabi inside for you. Oh, okay, more is coming. No space. Woo! Thank you. Ah, salmon. Mm. Mm. The eel looks really good too. And the creme mayo. And the prices are pretty reasonable. Mm. And it was a super fantastic sushi dinner because the quality of the sushi is very good. Much better than, than she may say, much better than those sushi express. How was the sushi? Very good. The salmon and the tuna was very fresh. So, sometimes in Singapore, you get the tuna that tastes a bit raw tasting, but I think this one is okay. Very good. So, anyway, after dinner, we're just going to be walking around a bit to check out some of the Japanese snacks. Then we'll call it a day for today since we had a not enough sleep night last night on the plane. So, anyway, tomorrow we are going to Meiji. So, it's going to be a long day of fun for us over at Meiji because I haven't been there yet. So, looking forward. So, in the meantime, we're going to sign off for today. Stay tuned for more Kyoto and Osaka vlogs coming right up. So, should be a lot of programs and my itinerary to show you guys because yeah, we have quite a bit of things to do during this um, couple of uh, days. So, stay tuned. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys very soon in the next video. Bye bye.